What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. I want to talk to you about a trade paperback that I finished reading, Superman Batman Worship. Uh, this collects Superman Batman issues 72 through 75 and Annual 4. And this is written by Paul Levitz. He wrote both of the stories in here because this collects two unrelated stories. And it is drawn by Jerry Ordway did the first story. Uh, no, no, he did the second story. And the first story was drawn by Renato Guedes. Uh, I feel like I've heard that name before. I feel like I've actually talked about that artist on one of my former videos that I've done, but right off the top of my head, I cannot remember where I have seen or heard that name before. But uh, those are the two artists who worked on this book, and this is two separate stories, like I said. The first story is the annual, I believe, and it is set in the future of Batman Beyond, and we get a sort of team-up story between Terry McGinnis and Superman. And it's an okay story. It's sort of a mystery story, and then by the time you get to the reveal of what the mystery is you're like oh okay that's the reveal that makes sense and it's one of those things where you're kind of slapping yourself in the face for not seeing it coming but then by the time you see it it makes a lot of sense uh, it's one of those mysteries it's not a bad story uh, it's a pretty good story I enjoyed it uh, if you like Batman Beyond the TV series this annual is going to mean a lot more to you than if you've never seen Batman Beyond I'm gonna go ahead and say that right off the bat uh, because I really enjoyed it it reminded me a lot of what I loved about Batman Beyond, just set within the world of the DC Universe. And uh, also, before I get off of the Batman Beyond topic, at the very end of this trade paperback, there's like four pages that is a preview slash teaser of uh, not Andy Diggle. Um, who is the guy who did the Batman Beyond ongoing series? Uh, Adam Beechin. I don't know why I thought Andy Andy Diggle. Uh, it, there's a preview slash teaser for Adam Beechin's Batman Beyond series, and it literally, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I haven't read Adam Beechin's Batman Beyond, but I'm 99% sure that they just took the first four pages of the first issue of his Batman Beyond and then stuck it at the back of this trade since Terry McGinnis shows up in this book. Uh, and it's a okay teaser. Uh, I don't know much about the story that it's teasing, but it does an okay job teasing you. If you liked the story at the beginning of the book, you're probably going to be interested in checking out the Adam Beechin story, but just from the pages that it teases, it doesn't really tell you what that story is about. Uh, so moving on to the main part of this book, uh, the present day story uh, that's sort of a team up between Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this book does something that kind of sort of annoys me, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, this is allegedly a team up series between Batman and Superman, hence the title Batman Superman or Superman Batman, whichever one you want to call it. And uh, this particular storyline seems to think that the best way to handle this series is to not have Batman and Superman work together. So throughout this entire book, they are on screen together maybe three times in this much book. And throughout the whole thing, Batman and Superman are both working together, sort of. They're working on the same case, but they are not working with each other. And I guess this is something to be expected in a post-Dark Knight Returns, post-Man of Steel world, where Batman and Superman hate each other and would rather not work together. Uh, I guess that's to be expected. I don't particularly like it. I feel like there's a middle ground between the hi, how you doing chum of the 1960s and the Dark Knight Returns, these two trying to kill each other. I feel like there's a happy medium between those two extremes. You don't have to have Batman and Superman constantly thinking about how they are both so different from each other and how they don't really work that well together because their methods are so very different. You don't have to have that in every single page of every single story that has these two teaming up with each other. Sometimes you can have Batman and Superman work together and actually be good partners with each other and not hate each other's guts. Now in this story they don't hate each other's guts but at the same time I feel like Paul Levitz is trying to play with that idea of Batman doesn't really work well with Superman by having these two work on the same case but not working with each other. And that just kind of bothers me but like I said it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it could be a lot worse. We could have these two actually working against each other. And so it's not the worst thing in the world, but again, I do wish that these two were working a little closer in a book that's allegedly 
a team up between these two. And uh, speaking of the cover here, uh, Lex Luthor's face looms very large on this cover. I'm kind of getting sick and tired of Lex Luthor. I feel like he is way overused. And I know that there are people out there who are much bigger Lex Luthor fans than I am. And I'm not going to say that I despise the character of Lex Luthor. I think that he can be used very well. And there have been stories that have used him very well. But it seems like every time I see him where he's just used okay, I'm just like, ho-hum, I've seen this before, can we get on to another character, someone who is not Lex Luthor, someone who hasn't been used 85 billion times, and makes me wish that the character wasn't being used right now. I really think that Lex Luthor, the character, needs to be retired for about 10 or 15 years, or at the very least, his appearances need to just be downplayed considerably. He doesn't have to completely disappear from the comics, but he needs to go away a lot more than what he does. Uh, for about 20 years from uh, the Man of Steel miniseries in the mid-80s all the way up until really I'd say the time when Lex became president, it seems like in every Superman story Lex Luthor is a recurring character, a main character who is there doing something. and. I understand that he's a bad guy, and so he's going to show up in these stories doing bad things, but even in stories where he's not the main villain, he would always be there in the background doing something. And to me, I don't think we necessarily have to have Lex Luthor in every single Superman story. And if you do, I think that that minimizes the character. I think it makes him less important, less special, when he shows up in every single issue talking about how much he hates the alien and how much of a smart guy he is and how he's smarter than everyone else. And yet, despite the fact that he's allegedly smarter than everyone else, he's always losing. Uh, we don't have to have that in every single page of every single Superman story. And this is a Lex Luthor story that, in my opinion, is just kind of okay. It's not really a great story. Uh, at the beginning, we find out that Lex is kind of indirectly funding this cult that is trying to uh, murder Lois Lane, and that's kind of an interesting idea because this cult, they are Superman worshippers, and uh, they are trying to get rid of Lois Lane because she spurned Superman. Uh, they say that uh, she had the chance to get with Superman, and instead she chose to get with this mortal, Clark Kent. That's a very interesting idea. I was very hooked whenever I saw that that was kind of the premise of the storyline at first. But then this whole cult trying to murder Lois Lane thing kind of just disappears halfway into the book when we find out that Lex Luthor was behind it. And then the story becomes Lex is trying to fuel this other planet's hatred of Superman. And in so doing, he is also trying to make them treat him like a god. And then that kind of ends with this time travel story where the Legion of Superheroes comes back in time to stop this clone, who is maybe a clone of Lex Luthor, I guess, uh, stop this clone from killing Superman. And the whole story, this whole book, it's loosely tied with itself, but at the same time, I really wish that it had stuck with one story or the other. Either stay with this Superman cult that's trying to murder Lois Lane, or do this whole modern version of the planet Lexor story. Uh, because at one point, Lex does call this planet Lexor, and that's a Silver Age thing, uh, Lex having his own planet that despises Superman. Do one or the other. Don't try and do both, because at the end of the day, I feel like this Superman cult story it was interesting, and they were doing something with it, and then they just dropped it. They just completely uh, avoided it. And I really wish they had actually done something with that story. Or you could flesh out and develop this Lexor story instead of having two half stories in this book. And that's not counting the Superman, uh, Batman Beyond team up at the beginning, because I feel like that's a complete story that I'm almost not even considering as part of the story that I'm talking about here. Just within the confines of issues 72 through 75, I really wish that they had done one story or the other. And uh, that's about all I have to say. And I know it sounded like I really hated this book. I did not hate this book. I know it sounded like I did. There were a lot of things about it that I think could have been done a lot better. I feel like Lex Luthor feels very petty here. And I know some people will say, well, that's Lex Luthor. But most of the time, I feel like Lex is capable of more grand schemes, schemes that don't feel so minor in comparison to what he's doing here. Uh, what he's doing here really doesn't feel all that Lexy to me. It feels very much like he's just, uh, like these are just minor things that would barely take up 10% of his day, and yet this is the entire storyline of this book. And also, I didn't really care for how Superman and Batman were reacting with each other, were interacting with each other here, but I did like this book. Uh, I did enjoy it, I just feel like it could have been done better. And I'm sure that if you watch this video, you're not going to believe me, you're going to say, well, he hated that book, I'm not going to read it. 
If you are looking for a Superman Batman story, maybe you just recently saw the trailer for the upcoming Superman Batman Dawn of Justice movie. Maybe you saw that and you're looking for some Superman Batman team ups in the comics. Uh, this is a pretty okay place to start. Uh, it's not the first place that I would send someone if they were looking for Superman Batman stories, but if they had read all the other four or five Superman Batman team-ups that I would recommend to them, this would be a good place for them to read some Superman Batman, I think. It's an okay place. One thing I like about this series, the Superman Batman series, is that outside of Jeff Loeb's run, each arc, each volume stands on its own, and the only reason Jeff Loeb's doesn't is because he did four or five volumes and it was all cumulative. It all I almost was able to get through this whole video without those guys across the street making noise. Anyway, uh, Jeff Loeb's run is all cumulative, so you really can't just pick up any of his volumes and read it without kind of knowing what was going on in the rest of the run. But outside of his run, all of these storylines, they stand very well on their own, and that's something that I really do appreciate about this series. And so, if anything, I really liked that I was able to just pick this up and read it without having to go back and reread all the other Superman Batman trades that I have and see if I'm missing anything that takes place before this. So I really like that this is a new reader friendly story, even if it's not the best story that it could have been. And really, the complaints I have aren't major complaints. They're not deal breakers, even though I spent 90% of this video talking about them. I did enjoy this story even though it sounded like I really didn't. Uh, so that's all I have to say about Superman Batman worship, and uh, I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back later in the week with another kind of video. Hopefully, uh, in this next video that I do, you won't be hearing those guys across the street launching their spaceship or whatever it is that they're doing. So, I will see you guys later on. Have a great rest of the day. Catch you then.